Okay, Dr. Shifali Chahar will be presenting on yeah. How deep is deep an analysis of multi-level biopsy in orbital lesions? A very good morning, everyone, uh, respected judges, uh, seniors, and my dear friends. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, the topic of my presentation is an analysis of multi-level incision biopsy in orbital lesions. I'm thankful to my mentors for their constant uh, support and guidance. I have no financial interest. So orbital tumors, as we all know, uh, orbit has a wide range of structures present, uh, which can be a site of origin of any number of tumors. Surgical orbital biopsy is the gold standard for accurate diagnosis. It can be an excision biopsy if the tumors are amenable to complete excision, which are the well and encapsulated tumors or an incision biopsy where the tumors are not amenable to complete excision uh, like infective inflammatory and many neoplastic conditions wherein we just need a diagnostic biopsy or for the debulking of the tumors. So, uh, uh, during an incision biopsy, we encounter a lot of pitfalls. It can be a non-specific diagnosis or a wrong diagnosis because we have an unrepresentative sample or the pathology is actually non-uniform in the sample, which can lead to delay in initiation of management, need for a deep biopsy, which ultimately leads to the financial burden for the patients. So, l let's look at the case scenario. In a case like this, we have certain pertinent questions to answer when we are dealing with the orbital mass, which is here in this uh, female. So, to procure the representative sample, we need to answer a few questions. How do we go about taking the sample? How many layers should we sample? How deep should we go when we are taking the biopsy? And actually, how deep is deep? So, uh, we propose the role of multi-level incision biopsy to answer all these questions. Uh, how many layers? We have to go through the superficial, deep and the deepest layer of the sample. Going beyond the epicenter of the lesion, which is actually defined by radio radiology or imaging of the sample. And this is how deep we should go. Uh, so, when we review the literature, not many uh, studies exist which talk about the pitfalls of incision biopsy and specifically, uh, not many studies exist which talk about multi-level incision biopsies. Only a handful of case reports or case series are present. Uh, so we plan to analyze multi-level incision biopsies in these orbital masses. It was a retrospective intervention clinical pathological uh, case series of a total of 169 cases. Uh, every case underwent a thorough clinical evaluation and uh, imaging by CT or MRI, orbitotomy with incision biopsy and a cryo assisted multi-layer incision biopsy was done for <coughs> each cases and the sample was sent for histopathological evaluation. The mean age was 41.2 years and it ranged from as low as a 9 months old baby to 83 year old uh, lady. Uh, the gender, the males were 60% and females were 40% in the study. The most common presentation was proptosis. Uh, imaging was done in all the cases. Uh, primary orbitotomy with incision biopsy was done in all the cases and no repeat biopsy was needed to diagnose any of the lesions in our cases. So uh, when, we under, uh, when the cases underwent orbitotomy, we took a, a sample range from 2 to 4, that is superficial, deep and deepest. And for the study, I have considered deep and deepest as a deeper layer So uh, and analyzed the superficial and the deeper layer in my study. And samples were subjected to histopathological evaluation, uh, IHC whenever required and special staining by microbiology. This is just a picture showing how we go about the cryo-assisted uh, multi-level biopsy. Um, a total of 169 cases were studied, the reactive cases in our series were 101 and neoplastic was 68 out of which 61 were malignant, malignant and 7 were benign uh, and as you can see when we analyze the samples superficial and deep layers confirm the similar diagnosis in 154 but superficial missed the diagnosis in 15 of the cases and out of these 15 cases reactive were 9 which are as listed and 6 were neoplastic out of which 5 were malignant cases. So you can imagine the implication of missing these uh, diagnoses or mismanaging these, these diagnoses if you don't take a representative sample. Just to uh, highlight this, a few representative cases from my study were this uh, like a 43 year old gentleman who presented with telecanthus and an orbital lesion. So when we do and provisionally uh, think about the differentials, it can be inflammatory, infective or neoplastic. Now, the superficial layer biopsy in this gentleman provided only fibrosis and mild patchy inflammation. If we were to think that this is the final diagnosis, we would definitely treat this gentleman as an inflammatory orbital lesion, maybe give him steroids. But when we go deeper, the deeper layer biopsy actually proved to be granuloma with multinuclear giant cells and special stains were positive for fungal granuloma. So can you imagine the implication of giving a steroid in a fungal granuloma by misdiagnosing this case? 
so this case was ideally treated with antifungals and the gentleman is doing very well. Similarly, in this 63 year old man uh, whose superficial layer biopsy only proved to be benign reactive lymphoid hyperplasia, but the deeper layer showed CD3 and CD20 positivity, proving him to be a ENMZL, which is a non Hodgkin's B cell lymphoma, and hence he was uh, ideally treated with uh, 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 radi radiotherapy <coughs> and is doing very well. Similarly, in this, uh, in this uh, 18 year old boy, the superficial biopsy proved to be a normal orbital tissue, but the deeper layer biopsy showed a round cell tumor. And also in this gentleman, the superficial layer biopsy uh, showed a dense fibrosis and inflammation, but the deeper layer biopsy showed perivascular inflammation and vasculitis, warranting a full systemic uh, examination for vaginus to rule out vaginus granulomatosis. Hence, uh, we see uh, that in my study, the, uh, in the reactive cases, the sensitivity, specific, uh, specificity, positive predictive value and the negative predictive value for the deeper layer biopsy was 100%. There was a significant difference uh, in diagnosis of different layer which was uh, significant in the study for reactive disease as well as for the neoplastic disease. Uh, there is dearth of literature commenting on the misdiagnosis of the orbital lesions on incision biopsy and to the best of our knowledge, no author talks about procurement of representative samples using the multi-layered approach. Hence, as a protocol, we propose that orbital incision biopsy must be layered, the samples obtained from the representative area, radiology must be done to uh, diagnose the epicenter of the lesion and the biopsy should be taken beyond the epicenter of the lesion. Thank you so much for your patience. Okay, thank you for nice presentation. But um, superficial biopsies, yeah, you can miss out uh, many a times. But the round cell tumor which you showed in the superficial biopsy, you just had fibrosis. But normal orbital tissue. Normal orbital yes, tissue. Yes. So it's very unlikely if it's a round cell tumor, if you have gone in the representative area, even in the superficial biopsy, you should be able to see some. Uh, but not the representative area, but if we just go on the top of the lesion and we just take a sample which is not even like uh, that much in size, probably that's why it was missed in the more superficial layer and the deeper layer pro uh, proved to be the round cell tumors. If it's and a, also if we go too deep in round cell tumors, ma'am, like especially the tumors which are very necrotic and like outgrow their blood supply, the deepest layer will actually give a necrotic sample. So there actually the middle layer is what gives us the diagnosis. So hence we propose that it should be like multi-layered so that we don't miss any uh, diagnosis because of the non-uniform pathology of the tumor. Yeah, that's true. Actually, uh, you should have the biopsy from the representative area. Many a times we get the biopsy and uh, you just have fibrosis and mild inflammation, you don't get the... Uh, a tumor or uh, whatever the lesion is. So. Like in lymphomas also, yes. like uh, it will, it is definitely we all know that it's a non-uniform pathology. So one part of the sample might just be a benign just reactive fibrosis or reactive. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. In your all cases, histopathology was done in one center. Yes, sir. By one center, by one uh, ocular pathologist. And about the technician, a single technician or double technician, sir. Uh, what single technician, same, same technician, it's same really team, sir. The entire, yeah. all the cases, same surgeon, same ocular pathologist, same technician, and same lab. You just don't have one technician, you'll have uh, I mean, multiple yeah. technicians, but it should be one center, yeah. Sure. If you send all the samples to <coughs> one center, yes, then you have a uniformity in the uh, slide Ma preparation the and... Uh, having an in-house pathologist, uh, Dr. Costa Malay is there. So, okay. Uh, yeah, so he is there as a doctor site. So Definitely. Uh, he only yeah. yeah. reports yeah. all the reports. Yeah. But in other cases, in processing of the uh, sample is one of the crucial, sometimes due to the faulty technique, they may miss, yes, the pathologist may miss yes. those diagnoses. Okay. No ma'am, open biopsy. All open biopsies ma'am and all multi-layered multi biopsies. So what are the minimum size of the sample? Uh, ma'am, size, uh, I can't tell in millimeters, <coughs> but we go about with the radiology of the sample, like however big the sample is and as I talked about, we define the epicenter of the lesion, like uh, suppose if it's a superior orbital mass, so we see the mass in total. Uh, by MRI or CT scan, uh, kind of like keep the epicenter in mind and go beyond the epicenter to take the multiple uh, biopsies. Then.